Well, when I was invited by the organizers of TEDx Islamabad, I was predictably planning to speak about technology, especially technology in Pakistan. But then a speech was made about two days ago, which forced me to rethink my talk, and I'm here today to set the record straight about Pakistan. Pakistan, which is from time to time called the most dangerous country in the world. And the speech that was made two days ago reinforced this view. And I'm here to convince you that we are better than that. But the facts, some of the facts are not on my side. Some of the facts that you've heard from time to time in international media typically feed into the narrative that was eventually crystallized in a speech a couple of days ago. Pakistan is ranked 147 in the Human Development Index. That's substantially behind Sri Lanka, India and Bangladesh, and even one point behind Kenya. Pakistan's passport is the third least desired passport to travel internationally. In fact, when I was named as one of the 35 young innovators in the world by MIT Tech Review in 2011, I couldn't go attend the ceremony because I wasn't granted visa on time. I held this passport. But that's not what I'm here to tell you today. I'm here to convince you that Pakistan's not the most dangerous country in the world. We are a big, beautiful, tolerant, progressive, brilliant nation. And here's my case. Pakistan is the sixth most populous country in the world, home to 200 million people. That's equivalent to two-thirds of the Europe's population, two-thirds of the entire European population. Despite this very large population in Pakistan, we always welcome our friends who may want to make Pakistan their home in their hour of need. Pakistan is also home to one of the largest international refugee communities. We have never tried to keep them out by building a wall, and they've lived here for 40 years. Maybe a lesson or two to learn for some of our friends. Pakistanis are a very generous nation. According to a recent study, 98% of the households in Pakistan give charity, which would make us one of the most charitable countries in the world. And our charity extends beyond our borders. Pakistan is the 16th largest contributor to the World Food Program. And no one symbolizes this charity, this generosity, more than Abdul Sattar Idi who single-handedly ran the largest charitable ambulance network in the world. My friend, our generosity is not our weakness. Pakistan has the sixth largest active military in the world. The seven million strong Pakistan military is bigger in size than the entire population of Norway. And we put this military might to good use. Pakistan army is the third largest contributor to the UN peacekeeping missions anywhere in the world. And we've paid a huge price for this peace here in Pakistan. 80,000 Pakistanis have died in this war on terror. And it has cost us $123 billion. That's equivalent to 40% of our entire GDP. Still, if you watched international media, you can be forgiven to think that Pakistanis are the most uncouth, most uncivilized nation in the world. Except that we come from one of the oldest civilizations on earth, the Indus Valley civilization. That's 3,300 years before Christ. That's around the same time that the Egyptians' pyramids were built. And 5,000 years before, America was discovered. 
Speaking of America, I look forward to a time when Americans elect a female head of state. We elected a female prime minister 30 years ago. Not only that, Pakistan is the first Muslim country to have three female generals in the Pakistan army. While most of the world struggles for equal representation of females, you'll be surprised to know that a 50% equal representation of females in Pakistan would be a disservice to the brilliant Pakistani females. 70% of the students in Pakistan's medical colleges are female, compared to only 48% in US. Pakistanis are a diverse nation. We speak 75 different languages by 20 different ethnic communities in this country. You'll be surprised to know that one of those languages happens to be English. In fact, Pakistan is the third largest English-speaking nation in the world, which basically means that there are more Pakistanis able to speak English in Pakistan than all the Englishmen living in the Great Britain. 63% of Pakistan's population is below the age of 25, which, among other things, forms the single largest cohort of Fulbright scholars anywhere in the world and the second largest cohort of UK Chevening scholars. These young, bright people also love technology. Pakistan is the ninth largest market for cell phones in the world. And Pakistanis just last year sent 400 billion Audio SMS. Check. We also have one of the fastest growing internet growth rates in the region. No wonder the CEO of eBay called Pakistan the hottest market for e-commerce. In fact, the number of internet users in Pakistan exceed the entire population of Canada. Out of those 37 million internet users, 32 million are on social media, just like my friend. Which means that there are more Pakistanis on Facebook and Twitter than the entire population of Australia and New Zealand combined. Pakistanis are the third largest contributors to the internet freelancing economy, which means that close to 150,000 freelancers, young people in Pakistan, use their education and skill online to make close to a billion dollars for this country, which means that we rank third in the world, right behind US and Ukraine, and one place ahead of India which is otherwise seven times the size of our population. Pakistani entrepreneurs are setting the world ablaze with their innovation. A lot of people say that Pakistan's startup ecosystem is all fluff. When will we see the first billion dollar startup out of Pakistan? Well, my friend, I'm happy to report that that has already happened six times. These six billion dollar companies were not only founded by Pakistanis, but most of their technology was also built by Pakistani engineers. And Pakistani entrepreneurs and Pakistani engineers are not the only people we are proud of. Our sportsmen are also fantastic. Most of you are probably too young to remember the great squash player, Jangir Khan. But just to jog your memory, Jangir Khan won 555 international squash matches consecutively. That's four times the consecutive wins of Nadal and Federer combined. You may not have heard of Pakistan's soccer team, but Pakistan produces 40% of the world's soccer balls. While you might imagine that Beckham and Ronaldo are somehow magically able to swing their ball, bend their ball with their free kicks, science tells us that these balls will not swing in air unless they were masterfully hand-stitched by the artisans of Sialkot in Pakistan. And football is not the only thing that we export. The world's largest trade route will not be complete without Pakistan. Pakistan is the linchpin to what is popularly known as one belt, one road.
or the Park China Economic Corridor. CPEC or the OBUR will connect 70 countries and will result in an annual trade volume of $2.5 trillion. And it will be incomplete without us. With Gwadar on one side, which is the world's largest deep sea port, and Silk Route on the other side, which is the highest international paved highway at 15,000 feet altitude. Before I end, I want to remind you of two inspiring Pakistanis, both Nobel laureates. Abdus Salam, who was a great contributor to what is called the Grand Unified Field Theory, which helped us understand the very forces that run this universe. And Malala Yousafzai, the world's youngest Nobel laureate. This 17-year-old young girl has singularly become the global symbol for resilience, female empowerment and education and has inspired millions in Pakistan and abroad about what Pakistan truly represents. Optimism, hope, and progress. So no, sir, Pakistan is not the most dangerous country in the world. Pakistanis are the bravest nation in the world. I rest my case.